Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what Perseverance is doing uh, right now and what we're going to be doing in the, in the future. Let me just say that it's very early morning on Mars right now, Sol 559. That's the 559th day of Mars, and Perseverance is probably still fast asleep, awaiting her next command load of things that she'll be doing in the day. Um, very productive mission so far. We've driven 13 kilometers, over 13 kilometers. That's over eight miles. And as mentioned before, we have 15 sealed tubes on the rover. So let me just remind folks what a, what a tube actually looks like. Uh, and inside these titanium tubes is a, we can store about a pinky sized rock it's right inside there, right? And so we have 15 sealed tubes on board the rotor. We brought 43 tubes total. Uh, we also have a, a sealed tube, which is no rock inside, just an atmospheric sample. And we also have two witness tubes uh, that are a measure of contamination uh, that we can do along the mission as well. Let me also mention that Ingenuity is also doing very well. That technology demonstration for a helicopter on Mars only designed for one month and has survived 18 months into the mission, which is very exciting for us. It is winter, though, and, and Ingenuity was never designed to live through winter. It has been an energy challenge, and we're carefully monitoring that. It does look like the energy is going up for Ingenuity, and we were just last week able to do a short hop of 100 meters, showing Ingenuity is fully functional. So we're very happy with that and hope uh, Ingenuity continues along with us in our journey. So let me look at this uh, first graphic here. Uh, Ken already showed this with the current rover location and the tracks of the rover exploring the Delta front uh, going back and forth. Uh, we've just arrived back at Enchanted Lake here, and our plan for the next two months about is to get several more samples, uh, a pair of rock samples, uh, as well as a pair of regolith samples, and another witness tube assembly. So this will bring our total of tubes on board the rover of 20 sealed tubes out of the 43. And I mentioned pairs of samples, so let me say a little bit more about that. We've actually had a pairing strategy from the very beginning of the mission. And so every rock we've gone to, we've actually gotten two samples from those rocks. That allows us to have one for an initial cache depot on the surface of Mars that we can put down and then maintain that second uh, sample on board the rover. So in the middle of this graph, this is actually where the possible first drop location for our samples to the first depot that we may form on the surface of Mars. So we go to the next graphic. And so about two weeks ago, we took this image looking back at where that potential depot location would actually be. You can see the rover tracks crisscrossing across this area. And one of the notable features about this area is how smooth and flat it is. Right, and so over the past six months, we've been very closely working with the Mars sample return teams, uh, looking at this area because, of course, they have to have the job of actually successfully landing here and retrieving the samples. And this really is an ideal location, very flat, very few rocks, a great place to land, and a great place to actually be able to retrieve sample tubes. So we're looking at the potential of putting down 10 to 11 sample tubes here on the surface, and then uh, that would take about two months to probably put those samples down and actually carefully document where they are uh, so the future mission can actually find them. So let me uh, talk now a little bit more about the future. So if we could have the next graphic. So what would happen after we put down that depot would be further exploration. Right, we still have a set of samples on board. Where we want to go is up on top of the delta. So this dark black line shows a potential traverse paths we're actually looking at to explore the top of the delta, gather more samples, uh, and get all the way over to where the edge of the lake was here in Jezero Crater, uh, shown there near the crater rim on the left of the image. Uh, that's probably going to take at least the next year of, of operations to do that exploration. Uh, but we do even want to go farther than that. Let me just remind folks that Curiosity just celebrated the 10th anniversary on Mars. Right? And Perseverance is you know, designed exactly like Curiosity. We expect a very long mission for Perseverance as well. And so our long-term plan is to climb up the crater rim, to go beyond Jezero, explore and sample the area beyond that, and to have the potential to actually rendezvous with the Mars sample return missions in the future and actually deliver all the samples we've acquired at that time. So a very exciting prospect for the future. And with that, let me turn it over to Lori. Great. Thank you so much, Rick. Appreciate it. So just from everything we've heard here today and just the complete body of work uh, that's been completed by this incredible Perseverance team to date tells me that we not only went to the right place, but we spent the right spacecraft with the right science instruments to explore this uh, amazing ancient environment uh, on Mars. You know, ever since Perseverance's very first core was collected, we've said that the Mars sample return campaign is underway and progress continues to be made as, as you're hearing. So the Mars sample return campaign, you know, 
just it could really revolutionize humanity's understanding of Mars, you know, by returning these scientifically selected samples for study using the most sophisticated instruments from around the world. So let's talk just a little bit about what's going on with that next phase of the Mars sample return campaign. Uh, we've recently made some changes to the campaign design. And if I can get the first image there, you can see our uh, Mars sample return family portrait. Uh, Mars Sample Return, of course, this is a strategic partnership with the European Space Agency, and it'll be the first mission to return samples from another planet, um, and uh, also the first to launch uh, from the surface of another planet. Uh, the samples uh, to be returned, uh, those that are currently being collected by Perseverance now during its exploration of Jezero Crater and its ancient river delta, those samples are thought to be the best opportunity to reveal the early evolution of Mars, including the potential for life, as you've already been hearing here uh, today. Um, in this image, you can see uh, Perseverance, uh, who's not only collecting samples, uh, but can be utilized to deliver the samples back to the sample return lander. In fact, based on a new assessment of the reliability and life expectancy uh, for Perseverance, uh, we now have increased confidence that the rover will be able to deliver those samples to the lander uh, in the 20 2030 timeframe. Uh, that lander, the lander that uh, we're going to deliver the samples to, uh, is going to carry a payload that includes uh, two sample retrieval helicopters. Um, those helicopters are going to build on this incredible experience we have with Ingenuity. Uh, and those little helicopters will be able to retrieve the samples that are left on the surface at the caching depot that Rick was just talking about. The lander will also carry the Mars Ascent Vehicle, uh, which will place those samples into orbit around Mars for capture by the uh, European Space Agency's Earth Return Orbiter. Um, so we're making tremendous progress uh, in maturing our plans for Mars sample return. And if I could have the first video clip, please. Um, this video uh, is showing some testing that's going on in JPL's Mars yard uh, with the Perseverance test bed known as Optimism. The goal of this set of tests uh, was to practice dropping the sample tubes from the adaptive caching assembly to the ground on variously tilted terrain. Uh, this is the same procedure that will be used when we drop the tubes on Mars. And this allows us uh, to then design and test the systems, those systems, so that we can successfully pick up the samples from the surface. And if I could have the next video clip, please. This video uh, is showing some ongoing testing of the updated sample return lander landing gear. This test, uh, using a 3 8 scale model of the sample return lander, uh, was specifically aimed at the legs supporting the lander structure uh, with impact speeds of about 1.5 to 2.5 meters per second. Uh, these tests are still ongoing. The latest test just took place a week ago. Um, and the approach with this testing is to carefully construct um, the physical test in the physical world and then construct the same exact test in a computer model. And that way, we can make sure that the computer simulation matches what happens in the real world tests. And then that lets us know that the computer model is correct and we can use that computer model to simulate thousands of landings on different slopes, rocks, ground types, orientations to understand and predict how the lander would behave on Mars. So looking to the future on MSR, uh, there's a few things coming up in the near future. Uh, just next week, uh, we'll be testing uh, the thermal protection material conductivity out at the Ames Research Center. Also in September, on the 28th and 30th, we'll be holding a science workshop that's open to the public uh, to discuss ideas about the deployment of the MSR cash depot. So there'll be a lot of discussion about that, that caching activity. And then following that workshop on October 19th, there'll be a, a go, no go decisional meeting uh, that will confirm that we are ready for dropping those samples at the depot. Um, in November, a little bit further on the horizon, the European Space Agency's member state ministerial meeting is going to happen. Um, at that meeting, we expect our partners, the European Space Agency, uh, that they will finalize uh, their architecture decisions for Mars sample return. 
So I, I mentioned earlier, we've been saying that the Mars sample return campaign began with Perseverance's exploration and the first sampling at Jezero. And what an amazing story those samples are telling us. Not only the Wildcat Ridge samples, but the entirety of Perseverance's samples are intriguing, which means they're perfect for Mars sample return. Perseverance collected both water deposited rocks and igneous rocks, leading to a highly diverse sample suite. And that diversity is central to the objective of Mars sample return, because the more diverse the sample suite, the more diverse the science investigations the samples are going to support.